friends today is gonna be my wrap-up for the month of July previously this year we've been doing my TBR takedown and my wrap-up in the same video but this month I read a lot of books and there was a lot going on in TBR takedown you'll see that next week sometime so we have our first for a while singular wrap-up video now some of these will be arcs that I read so I will be directing you to the most recently read arcs video but let's just hop into it shall we a little book stats for you as I said I read 10 books in the month of July for a total of 3,402 pages Typically I talk about the books that I DNF'd, but I'm not going to do that today because there was a literal crap ton of them. Uh, they will be in my TBR takedown video as well as there was recently a um, like a 10 book try chapter that I did. Um, there's a lot recently so um, I'm not going to talk about my DNFs today. We talked about those next week. We're just going to talk about books we read and we're going to start with the lowest rated and work our way up to the highest rated. As always, I will be linking in the description box down below my full reviews for these on my website. So if you have more questions about these books in particular, you can either A, hit me up down below in the comment section or you can check out my full reviews. The first book we're going to talk about today is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. I gave this a three out of five stars. A lot of that is because of the cover, if I'm being honest. A Flicker in the Dark was definitely not the book for me and I think it's because I am on this path of destruction with self-medicating main characters. I am so fed up with just alcoholic characters who are so far out of their minds they don't actually know what happened. I'm done with it. Like I'm so over it. I don't want it. I don't need it. Please take it out of my life. In this book in particular it's different self-medication prescription drugs not alcohol but it's the same deal um our main character is dealing with some serious childhood issues she is self-medicating herself to get through those um she's marrying someone she doesn't really seem that interested in i don't know that i feel like the characters were done very well i felt like they were very flat and one note and i guess who the killer was really or like maybe 8% in. I knew who the killer was and never had another doubt of who the killer was the entire book. And sometimes like that doesn't bother me if I'm having a good time but I also wasn't having a good time so I will probably pick up more from this author in the future because this was a debut but just yeah no I wasn't having a good time. Uh, then we have Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. I gave that a 3.5 out of 5 stars and that one will be in my arc wrap up which I will be link down below. We then have The Last Legacy by Adrienne Young. This is part of the Fable verse. It's not a direct sequel to Fable, but nor does it really have any of the same characters. A couple of side characters do appear, um, but it follows the Roth family. Um, so not a direct sequel, not really a sequel at all, but is part of that world. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars, rounded it up to 4. I think for me this book needed an epilogue to feel complete. I love how Adrienne rates her characters, how she weaves everybody together, but I think the plot of this book was a little meandering and a little lack lackluster. Whew. Trying to use my big words today and it is working against me. I just felt like there wasn't anything that surprised me. Everything went exactly as I had planned or as I had predicted and it just it was it was just okay it was just okay we then have well matched by jen deluca this is the third book in the well met series i gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars this is my least favorite of this series um i like april and mitch together don't get me wrong if you don't know this series follows a group of characters who um every year their school puts on a and by their school I mean most of them are teachers at the school. This is not a student book, this is an adult book. 
Um, but every year they put on like this Renaissance Festival as a fundraiser for the school. And they like the first book has like a hate to love romance. And the second book has like a I didn't think you were the person that you actually are romance. And this book has like a friends to lovers kind of sort of fake dating. Uh, so there's a lot of different things. There's a little bit of things for everybody. But for me, I just didn't love the big drama of this book. I didn't think it was great. Um, and one of my biggest issues with this book is April has never really been that into the Ren Fest. She really hasn't. And that's fine. But they definitely put her in like this whole like early 2000s montage of her, you know, like picking out a Ren Renaissance outfit and making her like this perfect Renaissance fair queen and like giving her all of these things. And like, it was more fan service than part of April's storyline. And it didn't make sense for the storyline for it to have happened the way it did. And it just made everything, it made it feel extra cheesy that I wasn't here for. If you know what I mean? It was a good story. It had great spicy scenes and I still enjoy the series overall. And I'll definitely be reading the next book because I have an arc of it. We then have The Garden of Small Beginnings by Abby Waxman. I give this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. So this book is actually a prequel to, I mean, it's actually not a prequel. It, it, it's, it, it, it's so hard to explain this. Okay, so Abby Waxman has three books that are connected. The Garden of Small Beginnings, The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, and Adult Assembly Required. Okay, so these books are connected, but nothing tells you that they're connected. It's one of those things where like, if you're not reading it in publication order, you'll never figure it out. But The Garden of Small Beginnings was published first and I read it last because I didn't know it existed and that it was part of this thing. Uh, but The Garden of Small Beginnings follows a mom of two small girls whose husband had passed away and she is like still dealing with all of that trauma from all of that because he died very horrifically and it's about her like finding herself again falling in love again finding out you know like ways to live again um and it has to do a lot with gardening <laughs> as always one of my favorite things about abby's stories is that she writes these fantastic found families that i am 100 percent support so definitely here for that well, look, I have some of these. I could have held them up for you. See? Look. I could have held them up for you and I didn't. I'm a loser. Anyway, I highly recommend Bookish Life of Nina Hill is one of my favorite books I ever read. Adult Assembly Required was really good. Garden of Small Beginnings, fantastic. So, highly recommend them all. Garden of Small Beginnings, Bookish Life of Nina Hill, Adult Assembly Required. Read them in that order. Then have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Paulson. I gave that a 4.5 out of 5 stars. That is also in my arc wrap up, so you can check that out there. As well as Stay Awake by Megan Golden, also was a 4.5 out of 5 stars, also in the arc wrap up. Um, the last one that's in the arc wrap up is The House Sitter by Ellery Kane. I gave that a 4.75. It was so good. Loved The House Sitter. But we're gonna bump down to back to a 4.5 and go to The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. This is probably my second favorite books of Sager's, the first being Home Before Dark. I think there's two different kinds of Riley Sager fangirlies, okay? You are either a, I loved Home Before Dark, but hated Lock Every Door fangirly, or you're a, I loved Lock Every Door, but hated Home Before Dark fangirly. So The House Across the Lake is definitely for your Home Before Dark fangirlies. It's creepy, it's spooky, it sets the mood, like it is just, it is something else, my friends. So this book is about a lady who um, is basically banished to her family's cabin on a lake um, after her husband died and she went cuckoo-cachoo bananas. She is watching the house across the lake and she thinks that the husband of the couple that lives across the lake has killed his wife. And so like she's self investigating it, trying to figure out what's going on. It gets weird, but it gets so good. Um, I actually have a full spoiler review on the website because I really wanted to talk about the spoilers and like how things happen and what really goes on. 
Um, so if you want to know spoilers for that one, I have a full spoiler review. That book was great. I loved it. Um, my favorite, like if you're trying to gauge, because again, there are different types of Riley Sager fangirlies. My two favorites are The Last Time I Lied and Home Before Dark. And then I feel like this is like a amalgamation of those two. So if you like those, you'll probably like this one. I haven't read Survive the Night yet, but I've read all the rest of them. So, and the last book that we need to talk about is uh, Something Wicked, Spirit Hunters number three by Ellen O. I gave this a 4.75 out of five stars. This is the last book in the series, which hurts my soul because I love these. They're mid-grade. The series follows a young girl whose family is Korean and her and her brother and her mother to an extent and her grandmother and possibly like members of her family have the ability to see ghosts. Okay. And she is a spirit hunter. She's someone who hunts bad spirits and sends them, um, traps their essence and sends them to the other world. So this third book is about something that is bothering her older sister. Um, the first book is something bothering her younger brother. The second book is like a haunted island, which was fantastic. Um, again, I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Um, I am so hurt that it's over. I love this. These are one of my favorite mid-grade spookies. Spirit Hunters and anything by Clarabelle A. Ortega are like my favorite mid-grade spookies. And so like for this to be over kind of hurts me a little, but I'm very excited to see what else Eleanor comes up with after this. Um, honestly, like to see the culture aspect of this, even though it's in a fantasy setting, it's done so well. And the villain in this one was really good. I liked the villain. Um, and I like their family aspect. I like, um, their family definitely goes through some changes over the years as far as like her parents believing the things that she's able to see and do. Um, over the three books definitely changes and, and evolves and um, her sister believing the things definitely evolves. Um, I had a really good time and definitely my favorite book that I read in July. So as I said, four reviews if you want more information. You can find it all linked down below. That is going to be it for me today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't notice anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!